Okay, so today's topic on faith mysteries is predestination. Um, everyone's favorite topic. I have a friend named Ron that um, is not a big fan of this topic, and I kind of agree with him on it, as you hopefully you'll see. Um, Ron, just so you know, this is only going to be about five or ten minutes, so um, even though it's time you'll never get back, it may be interesting to look at. Inside joke there. Okay, the definition of predestination is the doctrine that God has eternally chosen those whom he intends to save, meaning that God knows who he's going to save, and he chooses them, and then as they live out their life, they discover that God has chosen them. So some immediate questions that come to mind are, do I play any role in this? Does that mean that some people are not chosen and therefore eternally condemned? Um, you know, don't I choose God? He doesn't choose me, does he? You know, so these are some things that people wonder about. Let's first look at where is, where is this talked about in the Bible. Um, it, it comes up in several places. Um, Paul is the one who had broaches this topic most frequently. And one of the places he does it is in Ephesians, uh, Ephesians chapter one, verses, um, four through seven. Let me just read that to you. So Paul says, for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves, which would be Jesus. So the first thing that you notice about this is um, this predestination thing. Some people kind of lose sight of what's going on here. Paul is really stressing the eternal nature of God, for one thing, okay? So it's not just that he predestined us. It's that he did it before the creation of the world. Not before you were born, you know, not before your parents were born, but before the creation of the world. Um, and he, he even did it before man sinned. He, he, he chose to send Jesus into the world before before man even sinned. Um, there's, there's this eternal nature of God, there's this infinite nature of God, this all-knowing nature of God that we can't grasp. So part of the problem in understanding predestination is the fact that we're finite, God's infinite, it makes perfect sense to him, it's not going to make perfect sense to us. So this is a perfect topic to be in the category of faith mysteries, because we're gonna, I'm going to talk about this right now, obviously, but I'm not going to be able to fully explain it to you because it is going to be mysterious. Part of the problem is God's infinite view versus our finite view. That's going to create a mystery no matter what. Um, one of the things is that sometimes this stuff is taken out of context. So one of the reasons Paul was talking about this to the church in Ephesus is not to create all this confusion. Oh, am I chosen this? Is he chosen? Is there people who aren't? Is there people who are? You know, it's God play favorites. You know, he don't. He wasn't trying to bring up all that, all those ideas. He was trying to reassure pe those people in that church that ex had accepted Jesus as their Savior and had been baptized to reassure them that not only did they think that they had, had were saved, but God knew that. And not only did he know that they were saved, but he knew it before they knew it. He's just trying to show how powerful God is and how mighty he is and how all-encompassing his ideas are, and nothing gets past him. So he, it, was a, it was a passage of reassurance, and, and some people that read the Bible look at it, and they get all confused and come up with some strange questions. And one of them that people come up with is, well, if God chose some people to be saved, does that mean he chose some people not to be saved? Uh, did he choose some people? You know, because if you look at it logically from a finite point of view with a limited mind, if a group uh, from a larger group is chosen, then the part that wasn't chosen um, is going to be left out. 
So if some are chosen to be saved, then you might argue logically some are chosen not to be saved. But uh, that it can't be true, in my opinion, for various reasons. One of them um, is that there's various uh, scriptures where one of them is in 1 Timothy 2, verses 3 and 4, where God says, I want everyone to be saved. Now, how can it be that he wants everyone to be saved, and he's chosen some not to be saved? That doesn't make any sense to me. In addition, in the Great Commission, Jesus tells his disciples to go out into the world and teach everyone uh, the good news that he taught them and just show them all the stuff that they learned from him so that it wasn't just kept in an isolated area. And it's amazing how that that Great Commission worked out and that um, from a very small group of 12 until 50 years later, maybe 7,500 until 300 years later, you know, tens of millions of people and now um, a fairly significant portion of the earth um, it, it is, has Christianity in it. Um, so, you know, if, if, if the Great Commission had not been taken at face value, people hadn't heard the, the, the good news of Jesus as being their Savior, then it, it wouldn't have spread like it did. Uh, another topic is, well, what if, what if some people don't hear about God? What's going to happen to them? Well, that's another question for a, for a, future, a future discussion. But in my opinion, clearly, God did not choose some people to be condemned and some to be saved because uh, he wants everyone to be saved. In addition, if he chooses some to be saved and some to be condemned, it's, it's just, uh, it would be meaningless because it would be just like he's just doing whatever he wants to do and we don't play a role in it. You know, it's like we're robots and he's saying, okay, this group over here, I'm going to save you and this group over here, I'm going to condemn you as, as if you have no role in it. Now, I want to talk about that a little bit. Do I choose God or does he choose me? And this is an interesting question because uh, a lot of religions divide on this point, and even within Christianity, some denominations divide on this point. So, what Paul is saying in these verses is that God chooses us, okay? And I believe that. Um, there's several places in Scripture where uh, Jesus walks up to someone and says, follow me, and then they follow him. So he chooses someone, and then they accept that invitation, and they follow him. Um, he, he did that with Andrew. He did that with Peter. He did that with Matthew. Now, there were some people that he didn't say that to. Does that mean that they're never going to be saved? No, because it was the disciples' job to spread that news to other people, as, as we've already mentioned. Um, but then there are people that say, well, then, if God chooses me, and then I don't have any role in it at all. I mean, I don't. I mean, I don't choose him. Well, you accept him. Um, if, if he gives you the invitation, which he he gives to everyone. So if you're listening to this this video and you want to be part of God's kingdom, it, there's an open invitation. And, and talk to me about it in the comments if, if you want. I'd be happy to discuss it with you. Um, so I think to some extent it's a semantic issue. Um, the one thing you want to make sure you don't do is to say that you don't take credit for choosing God. Um, without God first sending Jesus into the world, you'd have no chance of being saved. Um, and he does have a plan for you. And there, there is an opportunity for each person to have the gospel presented to them at some point in time. Um, and so it, when that opportunity is presented to someone, they have a chance to either accept it or reject it. Um, does that mean that they should take credit for accepting it? No. All the credit goes to God. But we do play a role in that. Now, there are some denominations that say that you don't. Uh, it's just never made sense to me. Um, so with our free will, we hear the word of God, and we either accept it or we don't. Um, I have, my family has. Um, I, I, I wish that everyone did, but not everyone does. So... Uh, predestination, um, tricky subject. I don't know if I helped explain anything at all. There is an element of mystery to it. I think the key thing to understand, God wants you to be saved. Uh, he doesn't want anybody to be left out. All right, love you all. Hope you have a great week.